start the A cars. Uh, good afternoon everybody, good afternoon, sorry guys I had to wait a few minutes there but um, I had to go make coffee, it's freezing over here and I've got the heater on, gas heaters running and everything's fine now so now I can actually concentrate so welcome, welcome, I see we've got a few guys here already if you can enjoy it with us and um, I came directly to live on air so a lot of guys are sitting upstairs um, I hope they realize I am here and that they will come and join me uh, in due course right so as mentioned earlier and as the title says we're going to fly from Gatwick and we're going to fly down to uh, Zurich in Zurich it seems we have a bit of a surprise with the weather um, in fact let me just get that on screen to show you guys what I mean Right, so this is obviously in the route. We're going to pass some weather. We're going to go probably over much of that. And that. And just now when I started five minutes ago, this was looking like this. So depending on which way the things blow, and it appears to be blowing up, if I read it correctly, uh, we, we might get the bit of showers when we go in there or we might be blessed with perfectly good weather we'll see anyway that that is just what I see and uh, I need to quickly refresh the weather here as well oh, come on pause it quickly oh, yeah, I need to start my ACOS before I forget Hello Peter, good evening, nice to see you. Right, then, while well, that is done, I'm going to quickly drag my browser across so that I can set it up for easy viewing. And I can show you guys what's spotting here. Hi Mac, hi Paul. What we Hello. Talk I don't come and annoy you. Oh, you, you're more than welcome. Um, I, uh, I'm glad somebody is here with audio to talk to me. Then I don't fall asleep. <laughs> it's been a lazy day, you know. It's one of those things. Well, Paul and I. Well, I've just made a complete fool of myself oh. in some way. No, um, not disastrously. We didn't crash. We came close. Okay. <laughs> um, but I flew from Naples down to where was it? Paul? Reggio. Reggio, that was right. Yeah, but that one with all those different approaches. Okay. Okay. But, um, but predominantly, I was flying it to see how it handled that 10,000 feet reduction in speed mm. and it didn't do it particularly well. Ah. It's funny, look I mean yesterday we were all excited because of all those um, speed restrictions that obviously contributed to it doing it so perfectly yesterday. But if you don't have all of those speed restrictions, it looks like the rest of the code is still being implemented or something. Well, I think Paul would say that it, we're not there yet, wouldn't you, Paul? Yeah. Well, on your flight just earlier, Mac, it was fairly close and you didn't intervene with the speed brake. You know, I reckon if you had it done, yes. it was okay. Well, this is so, why I said to Paul that I need, I want to repeat the flight. I'm kicking myself because I didn't have any save points. Okay, Nico, so, um, but there was sufficient that I got wrong in that flight that it would be good to do it again, try and get it right. So. Okay, okay. I get it, I get it. But 
you, you'll be able to see when you get to Zurich Airport, because I don't know whether you, what sort of restrictions you've got on that We're gonna have approach. a look. We're definitely going to have a look, Mac. Yeah. So at this moment, I'm just busy building my route here. I cannot say that in the last five years I've parked this far, this deep into Gatwick. Um, and mm. I just thought I'm going to be different today. I'm going to do this. So I am just blotting my taxi route a little bit here. Okay. Except, let's do that. Oh my goodness, now I need to redo it if I do it this way. Alright, okay, let's do it again. So, go there. No man, not that far. There and there. And there. Uh, okay, well that's not going to help us really then, because this is a different layout, a completely different layout. We are using this new Oregoni scenery for Gatwick, so I'm gonna have to now redo this. Oh well, it happens. Hello, Christer. Hard to say, BC. Yeah, that's why we tested Christer. You know, I mean, it's there's a lot of things that could influence it. Mm. So that is obviously the way it works in this scenery. Right, and there's Paul and there's Ryan. Uh, not this one, no, no, this one um, is, I think they are, it's me and Uncle John and Owen that's got it. It's, it's not really available. And there's a whole story behind that. Um, so yeah, no, this one definitely not. Also the the other new one that's similar but with the dots and things. I'm just keeping that a little bit for myself. If you want some other Skymatics liveries, um, you know, you you got to join the Skymatics VA and then you'll have access to those guys. And obviously the Skymatics livery that's in the XCSLs um, is the main one that we use in the in the VA. But you know, I'll just fly this one. So. Right, I'm happy with that. We can get rid of that. But thank you very much. I, I like the compliment. It's nice. I know a lot of guys like it. Um, George, who made it, and I had a bit of fun, you know, bantering today here on, on Discord about it. Um, yeah. Okay, so let me connect network and then see who else is here. Are, are one of you guys flying with or not? Back. No, I'm not. I've only just landed. Okay. And I'm not because I've been watching him. Okay. Yeah. I'm ex I'm exhausted. Oh, he's still try he's still trying to ah. recover from the trauma. Ah. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Well, I don't see anybody else yet. He's not. The only thing is, he's not in A and E, and he hasn't got any broken bones. Ah, oh, that says a lot. Definitely, that says a lot. He was surprised oh. that the landing was as good as it was, although it wasn't uh, a professional landing. It was more uh, a display pilot type landing. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Right, I need to quickly see. I mean, in this thing, does it actually give? Yeah, it's Lima Sierra. So it's Lima Sierra. Let me bring this on here so you guys can also see. So we're doing Lima Sierra Juliet. All right. And Juliet. That is our SID, and we pretty much don't care for the rest. 
Right. So, ground services, doors. Oh, that one is open. Huh? It's a SAM trigger. Awesome. Right, 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 right. I suppose we have a GPU here, so we're not worried about that. It's pre planned. I need volume. Why can I not hear this thing? Ah, there is something coming through now. Uh, right then, our load. Ah, oh, what happened to your PC, Peter? <laughs> tell you when my PC decided yesterday it was not going to work, I nearly died. I tell you, I had a miserable day, man. It was terrible. Not fun. Where is everybody? I don't get it. Gentlemen. Hey, good evening. Hello. Hello, Nico. Good evening, Nico. Guys, we're down in live on air. If you want to come join us, you're more than welcome. I, I didn't see anybody connected here. Are you guys actually flying with? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm trying. I'll connect. I'll connect now. Okay. Sorry, Chris. I was saying I'm trying here. <laughs> okay. Ah, of course, Peter, that makes sense, yes, 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 yeah. And that makes perfect sense.
If uh, we can get runway 14, which is according to the SOP, the active one right now until 2000 local time. So we're going to have to move our butts to get there in time. Um, or it's runway 28 alternatively. I'm going to use GLS um, for a change. I haven't used GLS in a while. 20242. So on the ILS, let's just mark that one. ILS, we've got 11175. On the GLS, 20242. And VOR. Right, so I'm bargaining on getting that runway. If not, let's just see. Mm, runway 28 does not have a GLS, it's only got an ILS, but we'll see. We'll see what happens when we get there. I'm hoping to get the in time. 34 has ILS. Yeah, the SOP, if you look at the actual SOP for the the airport, it says that yeah. on weekends runway 14 is active from 9 a.m. until 8 p.m. local time. Okay. So then after 8 until 6 in the morning, it's runway 28. So if we get to runway 14, I'm definitely going to use GLS. That's what I'm bargaining on. Deck. Fuel is all loaded up and you are good to go. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Yeri, for the fuel. That's little Yeri, I think. Or his brother. I'll have to ask what his name is. Sorry, I missed that, uh, Nico. What uh, arrival are you planning? Uh, well, according to the, the airport SOP, um, I'll put it on screen there quickly. From 9 a.m. until 8 p.m. local. 9 a.m. in the morning, 8 p.m. local. It's runway 14. That is active. Okay, after 8 p.m. it's runway to 8 according to the SOPs. Now the wind, when I checked it, the last time was variable at 3 knots, which means you can take any, any which way you want to come in. The current star that I'm, you know, planned on is uh, Bravo Lima Mike 2 Golf, BLM 2 Golf. Yeah. Why do I put it that side? Hey, okay, okay. Right. Nico, can you enter your routing in the group flight? Um, look in my roster where it says schematics my flight roster it's in there i've put the whole routing with everything that i've chosen is in the egkk is you know what it's supposed to be eight right let me just change that it's the eight right there is no eight left eight right did you say did you say you couldn't find an ils on runway 14 negative i said if 14 is available i'm going to use gls Oh, sorry. No problem. Okay, so there you go, Christoph. Everything is in there. Right. Okay, I'm doing the update. Oh, I know I was going to ask you, Nico. How's your frame rate to this time? Oh, I haven't even checked. I don't have any issues. Oh, it's in 40s now. It's in 40s. Mac, I cheated now because I was frustrated. I, I fiddled with a lot of things in the BIOS and I just, I couldn't lift it. Okay, so... I ran the tweaker and I actually overclocked it for the first time in my life just to see what it's like. So it's running at 40 now. Okay. Is that over tweaked the CPU or the GPU? Um, no, that's the CPU. No, I don't touch the GPU. Okay. The one time a few years ago when I tried the GPU, I almost fried it. So I'm scared. Yeah. I'm scared. Yeah, I'm that's dangerous. Like yeah. That. yeah. But the funny thing about it is that the airports that I visited, I mean, 
I was doing a lot of work from Leeds and so forth, and they were quite heavy. It dropped my frame rates quite a bit, but Naples and these default airports, I'm up in the late 40s, early 50s again. Yeah, well, I'm... I'm... I think it's a lot to do with the particular airport you are and the airport buildings in front of you where you're parked. There's, there's no denying that. That is 100% true. But with everything I did, it just didn't work like it was on Thursday. So this morning I just let it slide and then in all my frustration later today I said, you know what, let's see what this thing does. Because it's, it's, a, it's a wizard that you run. I didn't set any voltages or anything. It actually measures the system in the motherboard, yeah. in the bios, and then it says to you, well, if you are, then you have to tell it you want to do gaming. There's a couple of questions it asks you. And then obviously yeah. based on all that it's it measures everything and then it switches the clock automatically mm -hmm. i actually took a screenshot uh, or a photo of it um i'll yeah. put it i'll put it uh, in a private message to you then you can actually see what it looks like mm -hmm. because i thought i was going to tell you about that anyway yeah my only comment would be just remember that your time of the year your uh, room temperatures are quite low at the moment so Very the less risk just be aware if your temperatures start to ramp up again. Yeah, no, I will. I will. Right, so um, this is what I'm going to do just while we're on this page, guys. Um, Peter, yeah, I agree with you on that one. Um, uh, I was at EDDF from Aerosoft this morning. I can never, I cannot recall ever having that bad frame rate, so that's why I started, you know, getting frustrated. But anyway, okay, back to the plan. I'm setting up for GLS on. Um, 14 with a Gipol transition that's where we're gonna be at right so that's fine if we don't get 14 I'll have to switch to ILS on the 8 but that's for later don't worry about that when we get there Yeah, Zurich Tower is on and it says 14 ILS. That's fine. He went now with so okay. GLE, so ILS for you. Uh, it doesn't matter. Say. It's it's, uh, it's runway 14 arrival, so. Perfect, perfect. Thank you for that. Let me also sort out my, my video quickly. And if you want to depart again, it's 28. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They use different systems. So the star is Bravo Lima, Mike uh, 2 Golf. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Transition Gipal. Yes. Exactly what you see there on the screen. Yes, just put it up. Well, you've got more people with you now, Nico. I'm going to have to go for a while, but I'll try and catch up with you before you land. Okay, are you okay? Yeah, no, it's just other things that have got to be done. Of course, no worries, no, I'm just taking Yeah, it. see you, Mac. Yeah, see you later, folks. See you, boy. Bye, Mac. Hello, Paul. Hello. I didn't see you. I'm lurking. Uh, I, I, and you're online, or you're on the runaway, uh, you're on the airfield as well? Negative. No, who's standing beside, who's standing next to uh, Nico? I think that's Christoph. Oh, that's Christoph, yeah, 9-4. One double seven, all right, please. There we go. Three. All right. 
Alright, so I've got flight level 290, gentlemen, just FYI. Hello, Yorkie. Yes, yes. How are you doing? How, how's your wife doing? Hello, Mako. Right, on, on this set guys, there's a notice that you guys need to climb as fast as you can once you're out of um, the restrictions because of crossing airspaces. I don't really see that it's that busy on Ivea, but I'm just putting it out there that it is noted on the charts, on the actual uh, set. Nico. Yes, sir. Can you repeat that, please? What did you say? If you look at the chart of the SID, yeah. there is a note in the departure chart. Due to interaction with other routes, pilots must ensure strict compliance with a specified climb profile unless cleared by ATC. In yep. other words, you've got to stay in... Yeah, in between the user. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. Once you're cleared of that one, I'm like I'll to get out of there, but you have to stick with the restrictions for um, the other airspace. Yeah, thanks. Another aircraft. Nico, yes. I don't have the uh, departure Sierra Fox or Delta 9 disk. Why not? Why not? Are you up to date with your um, Iraq? Yes, I am. Oh, there it is. There it is. Um, what I noticed, what I did notice, is there was an issue where this Navigraph, again, it changed my runway. Check your runway, that your runway is actually 8 right or 8 left. I have uh, it there yeah, on yeah, eight yeah, left. Yeah. Okay, and then... Alright, okay, I see if you change to 8 right, it's Sierra Foxtrot Delta 9 Papa is the actual um, departure. So it's not the other one, it's not changed. Let me, let me copy that and update that. Do you remember I changed the runway in my notes? And I obviously didn't change the, the set, so let's just update that. There you go. So it's Sierra Foster Delta 9 Papa for takeoff. Yes. Oh my goodness, Yorkie. Sorry, mate. Um, I think you had a, a full stop in between the the words there. Um, the system isn't clever enough to to understand a full stop yeah you add okay mate dot thanks one word the moment you do something like that um, the system is stupid enough to delete it it thinks it's a URL all right okay I see you'll PM me later that's perfect um, sorry again for this unintelligent bot deleting your messages but I get it yeah okay so yeah one day the AI will get more clever Right, okay, so I've got all those things. Right, now let's go back to this departure because now we need to make sure we've got this thing. Correct, you see. Uh, one in is incorrect, so we need that SFD. SFD 9 Papa. Alright, and all of a sudden. Mr. Sky Matrix has got his brain screwed on. Uh, Christoph, thanks for for making me think a little bit about it. No problem. Right. Just gotta check it again. Yeah, now it's
it's not as blocky. It had a bit of a uh, 90 degree turn earlier. I just ignored it, but now I can see it's better. Yeah. Okay. The other thing that I did do, um, you won't see it in this plan, but there was a um, an additional waypoint that I took out that doesn't correspond with the VA route. Um, obviously because of the different direction of departure, but that's irrelevant for us right now. Right, let's go, let's set this up again, take off, so 5.5 and 149. Trim up. What's your flight level, Nico? Two nine zero. Hi, Sergeant. Welcome, welcome. My active sky gave me 370 as a most favorable wind. Uh, it's a bit high. Yeah, it's not that long a flight. So if you can manage it, if you're light enough, by all means do it. But if you're a bit heavy, you're not going to manage it. Eh? It's a short flight for that altitude. Yeah, for my feeling, it was a long flight, Nico. <laughs> Is it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. For me also. <laughs> I'll try it. It's up to you. You're the boss. What's uh, your uh, I'll go down to 270. We have a block time of 1.30. So our air time is about an um, hour and 10 minutes. Plus minus. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Right, so... Ground to Flydeck, show me where you want to go, please. I'm pretty sure we did this already. We must have forgotten. Ground to Flydeck, the tug is driving up. Thank you so much. Right, gents, my APU is started. I'm going to tell those guys to, to take their leave just now. Okay, Captain, all doors and other guys over there. Yeah, APU started. Okay, my AU is already configured. So I'll do my broadcast shortly. Ooh, we've got the EGDD center online all of a sudden. Yeah, we didn't. We don't need to tell him anything. Look, he's not even, not even, not even report on blocks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's using CPDLC. Um, we, I don't know if we still have to get our clearance from him because he's a center. I mean, he's so high up. I, hang on, why is he calling himself an approach controller? I don't understand. Yeah, I, I don't understand. 
makes blank. What is, what is that CPDLC uh, code, Nico? No, the CPDLC is, is how you get your clearance. Um, give me a second. Uh, Christoph, just restart. I'll wait for you. Okay, thank you. CPDLC code TT01. Okay, I've never used CPDLC on iVAO, so I'm not familiar with this at all, Owen. On iVAO, it's a question of you're standing at the gate, and the next moment you just receive a message, bling, 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 and then he's done everything oh, for you. So yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure what the heck he means with this. I don't know. Shall I contact him? Yeah, ask him what he wants us to do. Yeah, I'll just try. Thank you so much. Seven Papa, to set up for my clear the full full board in approach runway two zero report established the radial inbound. Ah, so we do have to get a clearance there. That was a bit that was a bit too far for me. Uh, can you repeat that please? Can I'm uh, uh tick three five? This guy is very loud and very fast. Say again. We don't need clearance. No, we do. You have to ask him. He's just given Zero, over his clearance. Right via the sheriff, uh, Foxtrot, Papa 9, Papa. Uh, Tick 035. Take the 035, start and push up route, call for taxi. Call for taxi, thank you very much. Take 35. Yeah, you need... Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, you need to ask. Yeah. Descend altitude 2000 feet, Lufthansa 905. Sorry guys, is this the GTT center? Yes. I can't hear it. Um, when you tune into his frequency, it needs to turn blue. I had to tune it off to Unicom a few times, then I went to a different frequency, then I came back and then all of a sudden he turned blue. Yeah, he was stuttering, he was stuttering, I didn't understand a bit of it. Yeah, okay, well, I'm gonna quickly just mute myself here. Right, I'm gonna ask my clearance now, I just wanna get all my ducks in a row. Lufthansa Liner 5, turn right, heading the drift for 0 degrees, the base. Turn right, 3, 4, 0 degrees, Lufthansa Liner 5. Approach, good afternoon, uh, Skymatix 001, stand 559 at Gatwick, uh, requesting IFR clearance is filed. See if it actually transmitted. I don't think about it. And that actually not an approach. He's a center. You see, and now my push button doesn't want to work. Why? Why? Uh -uh. 
I need to fix this quickly. Why is my push button not working? My push button just simply does not want to work. Oh no man, I'm really, really not getting irritated. Why? My joystick key has just stopped working. I've closed it, I've reopened it. I've told them already, Maker, they know. Um, it's the same software I use every day, my friend. There's nothing different. Um, I don't know why this is not working. It's just testing me again, so I just need to stay. Full stand and five, turn right. As I can turn right, uh, heading uh, one one zero degrees to establish a left runway to right. right. Join the left from the right, from the left to the right. Right, one one zero degrees and clear for IRS runway zero A right, stance and manual five. Clan four four, contact Amsam radar, one two five decimal seven five zero. I know it will, I know it will. One two five decimal seven five zero, Clan four four, bye bye. Because when I start flying and I need to speak to these people, I need to be able to press my PTT man. Hmm. Hang on. It again, restart again. Yeah, no, I'm trying to relax, but I'm getting a bit worked up, so I'm, I'm just trying. Um, Establish on final course, sister 701 Papa. Sister 701 Papa, runway 20 K to land, surface wind 130 degrees for now. Clear to land, runway 20, sister 701 Papa. Tix 035, ready for taxi, Tix 035. Tix 035, Join Taxiway Juliet, then via Juliet, report holding point Juliet 1. QNH in Gatwick, 1007. Peter, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the key uh, uh, holding point zero eight um, right. More than likely, you know how it works. I'm going to end the flight, reboot, and it's going to work again. Because nothing changed, in, in all honesty, nothing changed. So I'm just quickly looking at configuring the joystick here in in the software and if that doesn't work we'll make a plan. Establish on ILS runway 08 right, Lufthansa manual 5. Lufthansa manual 5, runway 08 right, clear to land, surface wind 100 zero zero degrees or 6 knots. Clear to land, runway 08 right, Lufthansa manual 5. Seven uniform Delta, as much as sir, right to taxi. 
Defender 7 Uniform Delta, taxi via Alpha, the point Alpha 1, runway 05 left, Kennedy 1010. Kennedy 1010 will taxi via Alpha to Alpha 1, runway 05 left, Ryanair 7 Uniform Delta. Okay, I think I've got it. Um, this software, this Droid key, does not see my yoke at all. It just doesn't see it. So no matter how, what button I press, I've tried multiple ones, it's simply not seeing it for some reason. Never had this happen to me, but it is what it is. Alright, so I'm going to use the keyboard. Uh, thank you, Paul. I know I'm muted because I need to speak to this ATC guy and now my freaking joystick doesn't want to use the PTT. So I'm just going to mute myself so I can do my clearance and all and then I'll join you as soon as I can, okay? Yep, cool. Center, good evening. Skymatic 001, gate 559 at Gatwick, requesting IFR clearance as filed. Skymatic 001, uh, clear it to Zurich via the C4, the Niner Papa departure, runway 08 right, Squawk 1147. Squawk 1147, 08 right via the SFD 9 Papa departure, Skymatic 001. Left to 6. I know I didn't uh, press the right button, you uh, see. Lot to six, I'm about to close. You can proceed on this scratch on monitoring Unicom. Thank you. Zero one Papa, welcome to Southampton. Backtrack runway, back at dial left. Approved. Monitor Unicom, one to decimal eight. Bye bye. Unicom, two to decimal eight. Thank you so much. Uh, success, seven zero one Papa. Center Skymatics 001 is cleared uh, the destination is filed squawk 1147 runway 8 right SFD 9 Papa departure Skymatic 001 the back is correct There you go See now I just need to remember to press the right button Oh yes I wanted to set the squawk code Lufthansa 985 welcome to get with the taxi Get off choice. Ciao, alla prossima. Taxi to stand on my choice. Thank you. Grazie. Ciao, Lufthansa 985. All right, Christopher, are you back? All station, all station. Now, proceed on I can't get it. And report your intention on Unicom. Bye-bye. What country? From where? Right. From Iveo, I'm on the uh, I'm on uh, center just went out, so I was on center and it was saying, uh, you know, request ATIS. No, I think you're clicking on the wrong place. Hold a second. Are you watching my stream or can you watch my stream quickly? Uh, yes, go ahead. Okay, so. What you need to do to speak to this guy is you need to go to his frequency 132605. So you just click wherever the hell it is. Um, 132. Ooh, I can't even see it now in this list. It's probably because I'm on it. So I don't want to go off it right now. Let's do it on the other side. So, got Unicom. Oh, but he is not in the list anymore. So is he actually still online? He, no, he's gone. He's gone. No, he's gone. All right, he's okay, just well, gone. Then, then, then the points meet. Then we, we ignore it. Then you continue on Unicom. So, Christoph, are you back? Can we push and start? Or must I still wait a little while? I'm on. I think in five minutes I'm ready for push and start. All right, okay. In that case, if it's only five minutes, I'm going to um, actually push and start thing right now, because that'll give us enough separation. Before start procedure.
before start procedure. Oops. <laughs> Lovely gate sound. Bit annoying. I don't think it's supposed to be that loud inside of the cockpit. Before start procedure completed. Start number two engine. Starting number two engine. This thing is loud. I've got version 15, eh, Nico? Okay, cool. My uh, and my trimmer wheel is uh, running and uh, doesn't stop. Uh, just the sound or the actual wheel? Yeah, the wheel. Yeah, in in first instance, the, oh, the, the wheel is turning, yeah. Uh, no, then there's a conflict or something in your controller. There's something telling it to do so. 25 and 2. Oh, okay. What the Figure it out then. Yeah, yeah. Yo, that was highly irritating, that sound. Ah, oh, come on, Erwin's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> now I can live with Erwin, but that yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, that was a bit much. Starter cutout. Start number one engine. Starting number one engine. We're disconnecting the tape. Stand by. Twenty-five and two. Please disconnect your captain. Bypass pin has been removed. Keep your hand signals to the left. We'll see you next time. Have a safe flight. Bye now. Starter cut out. Engine start procedure completed. I'm ready for pushback. Alright, I'm going to move behind you shortly. Just give me another few seconds. Otherwise you're gonna push into me. I'm pushing back when you are gone. Yeah. I'll be pushing back after you, Christoph. But I'm moving. Well, I hope this GPS knows what it's doing, eh?
Yeah, I'll take off, eh? Enjoy, Owen. I just okay. turned off the, the volume <laughs> of that uh, trimmer. See what happens. I can just trim that. I can just trim it by hand, so it's no problem. Do that. Do what you need to do, Owen. You're the boss of that aircraft. It's a tight turn, guys. I'm texting. Okay. Before takeoff procedure. 
before takeoff procedure. Before takeoff procedure completed. Okay, I'm uh, lining up and going. Ah, oh, one thing I want to just quickly change. Stabilized. Approaching zero eight right. On runway zero eight right. Flaps, flaps. Flaps five set. Hi Steve here, yeah, all good, all good, how are you doing? Stabilized. Yeah, I'm rolling. Take off thrust set. Eighty knots. Throttle hold. Oh, I'm taxiing. Okay.
runway turn off lights off. Strange, it just doesn't have the same name designator, so obviously what we looking for is not seen. Interesting. Approaching transition. In actual fact, no. No, 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 not at all. We can't switch transition because these are not flight level restrictions, these are altitude restrictions. Flaps up and set. It is a steep turn, my golly, wow. I first instance I I chosen that uh, I've chosen that Zulu that was easier that should have been easier yeah Oh well, this was fun I must tell you that You ma you're making the same turn as I did Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was fun Tell you what you fly this in the real world you're going to feel it eh you're going to know you're yeah. in that tight turn Yeah 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 sure You're going to be pushed in your chair Well, we are higher than 2,000 and below 6,000, so for that one, according to the chart, we're okay. This one is between 3 and 6, and then 5 and 6, so let's see. Approaching transition. Yeah, we're not going to switch right now, I mean, you just Thousand hold your to horses. Level off. It took me until a flight level... Let's say twelve thousand feet until I could into, until I could push the uh, autopilot. Why? I don't know. Oh, I no, think no, it no, has something. It's, trim. it's your trim is out. That's why. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, if your trim isn't in, you can't uh, activate your, your uh, uh, autopilot. And you were comparing your trim was out. Your trim was running. I'll I'll put the uh, the sound on to see what happens then. Perhaps it's, perhaps the stream is off now. You going, Christoph? So now we're just going to hold until we clear. My trim is silent now. Super. Yeah. It's a Zippo, eh? It solves itself.
Yeah, thanks, Yoki. Not sure if you're still here to, to hear me say this, but yeah. Right, so that is the arrival chart. That one is uh, the GLS chart. So I've got the code available already. I've been programmed that. I'm going to try go for runway 14 and we'll do the GLS approach. Um, otherwise, failing that, we will do uh, the ILS on this chart. If we make it before 8 p.m., and if someone else doesn't moan, get there afterwards we're going to try and use runway 14 so to do that, that one. sometimes that weather is shining over there Looks like all this weather is kind of low, you know, we're going straight over it. Yeah, it's bad weather, huh? Yeah. It is rainy.
sorry. I slept well today. Paul, are you still here? I am, yes. I'm reading Zebo's message here. Me too. Me too. I've read it about 20 times. The yeah. transition level for each KK is what level 060? You said para Q and H. Yeah, I've had to translate it in my head to what he intended it to say, I think. It's the transition altitude for EJKK is 6,000. Yeah, 6,000 feet, not flight level 0, yeah. 0, And then the next sentence should be something like, when in descent you set your barrel QNH at about flight level 70, which is would, where the transition level would be. I think that's what he's saying. Yeah, but when we fly in the real world and you get Descend to 6,000 yeah. feet QNH 1012. It doesn't matter whether you're on flight level 120 or 200. It's it's irrelevant. You press the button because nobody's going to stop you to go there. Mm. So, um, or if you're in the states, yeah. But flight. either way, um, but either way, I mean, in this particular case, uh, what is it? Six X. The Pascal's from standard, so you're probably only looking at 180 feet difference anyway. Yeah. And I've, what I've been thinking about over and over and over, if the local QNH is below 1,013, then... At standard, you'll be below 10,000 feet. Because you, the plane would descend to achieve a thousand thirteen pressure sensing. 
Yeah. So it's kind of the wrong way around. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. He, he's actually confused me now a bit, to be honest. Um, I, I, I'm definitely still saying thank you, Zebo, because it means there's something to go think about, and we're going to have to fiddle with it. So while we are here, um, let's look at the charts. Okay, so let's look at. I'm. Um, if if I have to disconnect from. Um, Ivea, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna literally plan everything to go on the GLS runway 14 now. Um, in actual fact, you know what I am gonna do? I'm gonna disconnect from Ivea so then I don't bother anybody. Uh, apologies to the other guys flying now with me. No problem, Nico. Um, so let's let's take it step by step. There's the chart, right? The chart tells us transition altitude is 7,000. So your transition flight level, he's not talking about the transition flight level until there. So the transition flight level there, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to go and work this out, you know, 100%, but what we're going to do is we then going to set that, you see that says transition level. There's usually a thousand feet gap, isn't there, depending on the Q&H. Okay, so, that, yeah. then, then my question is, because in the old days and up until this morning, I would all, I would always change that to be the, you know, like a thousand or a thousand five hundred feet higher than that. Now, I'm yeah. wondering if he didn't write the code now to mean that that should now remain flight level seven zero. Let's ask him, let's ask him. Okay. I'm going to take a quick screenshot. Well, he said that it's calculated from, where does it say? It says, so on your screenshot, the FMC calculates flight level 100 on base standard QNH. So it's implying that it's, it, it's calculating flight level 100 at standard. Yeah. Yes. So he's implying that it's working that out regardless of what you set in your aircraft. What he's saying, I think, is that because you've selected local QNH, you're misreading the altitude. I understand. I, that much I understand. My okay. query is now about this. Do we leave that at that value, which comes from the chart, which is clearly there? You guys see that mm -hmm. it's exactly the same. Yeah. Now on the chart it says altitude, and on your yeah. FMC it says flight level. Well, it says transition level. Now a level is always flight level something something. Now you can't have a transition altitude and a flight level on, on the same level except in the US, which is 18,000 feet. And I don't know of any other country that does that. There's always a thousand or 1,500 feet or so difference between transition altitude and transition flight level and, and the, the difference in there is your no-fly zone. You cannot file a flight plan in the middle. It doesn't allow yeah. you to do that. So the question now is still, <laughs> do I leave mm. that or do I change that? Because I hear what you're saying, Paul, and I'm in agreement with you. The way he talks, mm. you know, there's a different calculate, uh, calculation happening. But what is the point of this then? We've always taught the people when we teach them to fly that this is where, come on, mouse, that standard turns yellow. That yeah. level is where standard turns yellow. So that means you've just passed the transition flight level and you're on your way to the transition altitude. Two different yeah. things. Out of interest, what is your destination QNH? I'll tell you now. Um, Steve, um, if, if... 1011. Yeah, if the transition level changes... Look, the Zebo as far as I can see, it reads this value of the chart, you know, there. Mm. So the question now is to bring the two together. Um, let me just also L S Z H. What did you say it was? That Q and H? One zero one, eleven. Yeah, one zero one one. Okay. Zebo can have a weak moment as well, huh? 
Oh yeah, yeah, it's just human, just like me, unfortunately, you know, I hate being human, it sucks, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it, it, it doesn't seem logic. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, we, we're going to figure it out now, so let's let's do one thing at a time, let's start, let's start setting this thing up, and take one thing at a time, so we now have one four, one seven in elevation. Current temperature is 21 degrees, and the ISA deviation is then 8. Right, so we're going to go 8, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, and let me please set up the rest here. So Steve, to make a long story short, as far as I know, this that thing gets read from the Navigraph data. Okay, so we'll keep that in the back of our minds. Um, all right. So then, um, just want to get that on. At LSZH, we read TL equals 73, but to set flight label. As far as I can make out, with this local QNH, the transition level would be 075. Well, I don't know, Zebo, if you're watching and listening to us, but I see you're already typing. No, so, he's typing, he's giving us a lesson there. Sorry, what did you say it should be? To do? What did you say? 075 is what I meant. So it's it to only be. 500 feet difference then? Yeah, at this particular but we are with arrival QNH. Yeah. Okay. Right. If it were a thousand and fourteen, it would be a full thousand. Gotcha. Thousand and fourteen and above. If the pressure drops to nine nine five, then you would add a full thousand. Sorry. Thousand and fourteen and above, you would be the same. I'm confusing myself now, ignore all that. <sighs> No. Okay. Uh, if I, I can correct that. myself here, Nico, mm -hmm. if I can correct myself, you'll be adding 1500 feet at this Q&H. You see, that's that's why I just thumb suck. Yeah, sorry. 1500. No, yeah. no, no, what is no. Steve, we're busy figuring that out. I'm talking to Zebo in the background here. Um, Zebo, are, are you actually watching? Are you seeing the comments? Are you listening to us? Sorry, just a question.
I'm starving. A pie and a beer maybe. That makes sense. Okay, okay. So so that Q and H, as I've said many times, this is what everything is built upon and that is why you absolutely have to have the correct q and h so that is the the absolute cornerstone of the foundation of the whole descent profile in vnav so uh, that cannot be out it needs to be in otherwise you get the wrong thing happening at the wrong time Um, Steve, once once Zebo's finished, I'll try and with Paul's help translate everything for you guys um, to make more sense. Um, I'm currently worried about that. Zebo's currently worried about that. <laughs> so we need to tie the two together so we come to an understanding. I understand that that's the cornerstone. That's the most important piece of information for VNAV in this whole aircraft, um, apart from the obvious you know, programming of the legs page, but that thing. Okay. Um, this descent forecast, um, Simona, you can do any time before top of descent. This page has to be filled in any time before top of descent. The moment that nose dips, you, you're at a disadvantage if you haven't done it already. So you can do this physically on the ground before takeoff because the, the values that you are using here, this is already 6 to 10 hours old by the time you get it. So that's not going to change. Right. The only thing that does change is the Q and H, and that's why the whole VNAV profile is built on that. And, and this whole page needs to be done before. Has to be done before the descent starts. All right. Um, I'm gonna think about this just for a second. Give me a second. Let's see what happens.
right, okay. That takes care of that. So, okay, now let me just close this thing. It's driving me nuts. Don't say. All right. So, the first thing you need to do is you need to set that. That, according to what I understand, Zebo says that transition flight level has only got one purpose. And that is to trigger that to turn yellow so that you know it's time to press the button okay now what you need to look out for the rule that Zebo is trying to teach us and he's still typing I'll tell you the rule it's got to do with your um, restrictions so let's quickly have a look see go there What is a transition level restriction now really if we think about it because transition level is going to be literally that one says above 7000 so transition level is going to be somewhere there in the middle because that's above the 8500 and that's below the 8500 okay so what what Zebo is saying is you have to wait there, there's there's one or two things that's going to happen either you have to wait until you pass the last restriction there okay which gives you that line or he says no later after crossing flight level 095 okay so after that's your last restriction then you're going to descend, descend, then you're going to hit 095. So what you need to do is you need to set it after crossing flight level 095 as soon as possible. Is that how I'm reading it? I'm reading it to say... He's just said exactly. Look, he's just said what I said. Thank you, Zebo. <laughs> I feel vindicated. Look, he's just said it. Mm. He's, he's mm. literally said that that's exactly somewhere there where you need to set it. I'm reading it as saying, like, don't set the local Q&H until you've gone through flight level 100. Yes. Okay. So you need to wait. You can't set your Q&H uh, to the standard Q uh, to, uh, to the local q &H. you can't set your q &H to the local q &H, um, before flight level 100 and as soon as possible after you reach flight level 095 that's how I read it okay so you have to wait for flight level 100 then you can set your q &H, but no later after crossing flight level 095 so so maybe maybe you mean you've got that 500 foot difference you know between 100 and 095 you need to set it in that band is that what you're meaning yeah don't descend too fast yeah okay so let me type this so between flight level 100 and flight level 095 is the <laughs> best time to set QNH, local QNH. During descent. I'm reading it as never before flight level 100, but yes. thereafter where it is appropriate. That, that could also be true. Also be true. It sounds very nice. Yeah, I agree with that. Because you've got a few thousand feet for the 
VNAV to recalculate to the local Q&A, so it should still follow the profile. I think we're all learning something new and we're going to have to make sure we learn it correctly. So. Steve, that's that's the, the basics today. of what I read into it and that's why I'm saying it out loud. Um, I physically typed what you said already to Ziba and I'm just waiting for confirmation because I said so between flight level 100 and flight level 095 is the best time to set local Q&H during descent. Then Paul said, um, you know, what you said about there's, there's a, a gap, uh, an appropriate time because, I mean, your actual transition level is not necessarily 85 or 75, it could be 55. You know, so you just need to make sure that you you say that the way. Okay, hold on. You are uh, correct, but we are asking in gen general now as a rule of some not specific or this <laughs> Ziba, we're asking now as a rule of thumb so that's it Better check where I'm at. I don't even know where this top of descent 89 miles. Okay, okay. Awesome. Okay, so the rule is easy. The rule is easy. The rule says after crossing the last flight level restriction, and I'm going to bring that back up so we all understand what we are talking about. Your last restriction, your last flight level restriction is flight level 120 that is the last one above your transition flight level and transition level okay so somewhere after that star but no later than 1000 foot above transition level and in this case uh, okay this chart doesn't give us but the other one your approach chart gives us you see there transition altitude is 7000 so after crossing the last restriction 1 to 0 and 1000 foot above which in this case is now 7000 you saw it on the other chart so you're talking 8000 so between there and there and with the added thing of 10,000 feet. So you wait for 10,000 feet, okay, passing that, you wait for 10,000 feet, and you add 1,000 foot to your transition altitude, which is then 8,000. So in this instance, it will be between 10,000 and 8,000. You have to set your local QNH, as easy as that. That's all it means. That's that's the rule. I'll try and type it out and then put it here in the 
chat with you guys so we can okay don't forget flight level 100 to 40 okay the speed of 200 to 40 at 10,000 is a restriction as well if transition level is example flight level 1 to 0 all right if your transition level is higher than 10,000 then obviously the flight level 100 slash 240 is not the restriction I absolutely agree with that because it's, it's irrelevant then um, okay all right So, Well, that's a great tip. Uh, I mean, I know it is. I know that it is where you can look, but let's have a look. See, right? So, let's go have a look. See, all right. So, what Zebo says, yeah, <laughs> you, you're so clever. He says, check FMC. You can see flight level, level or altitude in legs page in the descent page. Okay, so there it is. There. Uh, well, hang on, that's the legs page. Hang on, let's go to the descent page. You can actually see it there too. So, hang on, let me read it again. You see the flight level altitude in legs page. Sorry, I, I was correct. I'm reading it incorrect. So, there you can see, you see there's FL, FL, FL. So, that's flight levels. Then it tells you flight level. That is your last restriction in the flight level range. And then by Gipple you get 7,000. So that is in the altitude range. Now if you combine that, it just brings us back to the charts. The charts tells us 7,000 is the transition altitude. So we need to set the QNH at least 1,000 foot above that. And it needs to be below 10,000 as well. So between 10,000 and 8,000. We need to press the button to go to local QNH. Okay. Wow. Yeah, all clear. Okay. Ah, thanks, Owen. Guys, do you understand? I'm, I'll, I'll have to write it out for myself as well. If I can do it, we'll, we'll put it here in the stream as well. If, if I can do it there's enough time otherwise I'll just do it after we land just to make sure all these little things you know I mean we don't think of these things really I don't now we learn all this nitty gritty little things. It's amazing. Paul, you okay? Are you happy? I'm stewing over things. I don't. There are all kinds of things flying around my head. But yeah, I think I know what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice one. <laughs> We'll ask Peter here on the stream to explain it to you later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I need to get a little notepad open. I don't want to keep on typing the Zebo thinks, you know, he needs to stick around. So let's quickly open up a new text document. To set.
Don't forget you're flying, by the way. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's no problem, uh, Nico. I can I I check the web by and. Uh, I, I've, I've logged off iRadio just in case, you know, I'm not going to miss the ATC guys around, so I actually just disconnected there. When, um, oh, you're gone, yeah. <laughs> I, see, I see it now. Yeah, there's TD coming. Yeah, Blogger, man, there is a formula to work it out. I think that's a very simple form that you're talking about there. Um, me personally, just as a rule of thumb for myself, um, what I basically do is I add 1,500 regardless. I, I mean, I don't sit here with a calculator. I don't have a, a spreadsheet like with the ISA calculation. You know, I, I haven't created something like that for myself. I think I, I think now that I know a bit more, I might just really do that. You know, create a little calculator for myself. Um, well, at least Zebo gives me a smiley face. Thanks, Zebo. So we're going to. We're going to have to rethink this. Uh, I'm going to have to write it out for myself as well and then I'll share it with you guys. But this was interesting. This was really interesting. Um, let me actually quickly set up this whole approach thing while we've got time. I see we're struggling a little bit there. So we're going to use the GLS for a change. We've got the code in for runway 14. And remember the GLS works like the ILS. So we're literally going to see the same kind of thing except, uh, you know, some of the FMA and stuff is different. We'll get there and we'll sort it out. All right, I'm just going to do auto break 1. Go to 4000 and keep the course heading 135. Hey, it was fast. 135. 135. That's great. That's fine. These clouds are eating the frames. Hey, look at this. That's crazy. we look up and we don't see those clouds my frame rate just goes through the roof again damn it you know okay what else do we need to set we need to set 1011 is that still the actual kilonage yeah 101 101 we've got 3.5 tons of fuel we will end up 3 Drop sixty four seven. Right, and our decision altitude is what? What, 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 what? One six eighty. Oh no, come on, man. Right, okay, so we are set. So using this rule, I'm just thinking out loud now. Um, I'm going to go do that forecast page again. I'm going to keep it. I'm telling you guys now, this is just me thinking out loud. I'm going to keep my transition level always at 1,500. So I know that when that thing turns yellow, I need to press the button. Not before and obviously as soon as possible after um, that thing turns yellow. Because you've got that 500 foot band there to play with. It. So I think that's how I'm going to help myself do that. Right. 
Right, now we had a nice long discussion here. I'm gonna have to go back quite a while to pick up on everything. Yo, Peter, I, I'm a, I'm a, a, a funny guy. I, I hate complications. I want to make things as easy as possible. And that just makes logical sense to me, you know. Um, add 1,500. The moment that thing goes yellow, you press the button, and that's the end of the story. Um, yeah, that's the, in the simplest format to fix this. If you think about it, just think out loud now. I'm thinking out loud, just think about it. When we took off, Linda said we're getting close to transition level. I clicked standard and then I realized, hang on, the actual restrictions are altitude restrictions, not flight level restrictions. Let's bring that back up, right? So these are not flight level restrictions. These are altitude restrictions. So you cannot press the standard button and go to standard Q&H until you've passed SFD because those are all Q&H related restrictions that's not standard related and, and what we're doing now is we're doing the reverse going the other way so what we need to then do is check that we don't miss the thing there it clearly says flight level so you have to be standard Q&H there you can't change the standard Q&H before you finished the restriction of the flight level you have to be at the flight level so your standard Q&H there is very important so after that and then obviously before reaching the transition altitude and as Ibo say the rule says a thousand feet above the transition level now don't get confused guys that just happens to be the transition altitude you might find in a different chart in a different approach a different value there but remember you can look on your approach chart what the actual transition is so you take that value add 1500 and the problem goes away because now you've got 500 foot to play with from the moment that that thing goes yellow okay I'm starting to catch on a little bit better Ugh, your rendering settings man I've hardly got any rendering settings oh you know what I've got this textures let's drop some textures I don't see anything else that I really want to drop. I think this is all related to the clouds. Skymax Pro. Yeah, there I've already got extra ten frames. It's a pity. Such nice clouds. You know. Yeah, they are back to, to 30 FPS. I must remember that just to refresh the clouds next time quicker, faster. Yeah, it's bad, man. But look at this. Look at this. I mean, look at the FPS now. Look, it's, it's gone up from 15, up back to 30. Just by refreshing cheap trick but it works okay Steve that was interesting Zippo if you're still watching thank you so much um, I'm back on there. Okay. I could murder a cup of coffee. Would you care for one?
Okay, question. Um, there's obviously 22 viewers according to this viewer counter that I've got. I'm not really sure because I, I don't trust it that much. Um, if I publish this rule in the Zebo pilots group and on Discord in the Zebo chat channel, is that sufficient for you guys or is there another place you want me to put it because um, I'm not sure if all of you guys are going to see it if I do it there and I don't feel really comfortable the more I think about it to just scramble it down and just put something in this stream if you guys are willing to wait five or so minutes after the stream ends you know I'll try my best to do so but I don't want to muck it up now just because I'm in a hurry and um, if, if there's a better place you guys need to tell me or if there's an additional place let me put it that way yeah I can put it in my anger I can put it in my anger, yeah. That, that's the central place where all of you guys can get it. And for those guys who don't have... Um, yeah, the, the, the training checklist, well, it will definitely go in there. I think definitely. Um, the, the thing is just when I speak in general to people about the training checklist, a lot of guys have grown out of it already. Um, you know because of their experience and qualification at this time so they don't necessarily want to go and download it so what I'll do is I'll put it in the training checklist and I will put it as a separate little PDF um, in my private hangar and the guys anybody listening or read um, viewing the stream now uh, the link to my private hangar is in the description below the video so once it's done it's going to be in there I think that's the best place. That's the most central place and anybody can access that. Okay, so now we have to start concentrating. We on the chart there. And we're gonna take it step by step. Zebo, let's see. There we've got the two dots. So what we're looking for now is obviously to follow the rule. We're gonna wait until that turns yellow. We're gonna immediately press the button. And then we're going to see how it handles the transition to 10,000 or be, to go beyond below 10,000 feet. So we're waiting for that final restriction. thousand to level off Get stepping down, stepping down, but there's a huge dip there. So what I'm gonna do is pull the speed brake. And I'm not focused. Come on, pull the speed brake, brother. Good evening. Hello, Torsten. Wow. Good that evening, Torsten. That's a long time ago. Long time no see. Yeah, long ago at least uh, Two weeks. Six days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Time flies. We are having fun, huh? Look at that. Look at that. I'm obviously assisting the braking, but look at that. It's gone down to 240, exactly what it should do, Paul. Yeah. It's leveling off to try and help you. Yeah? So we keep an eye on that one. It's going to come pretty. 
pretty soon now. Within a thousand. So, a hundred feet. Yeah. Approaching transition. Yes, got it. Hello, Gint. Right, so we're waiting for 8.5, that will turn yellow, and then we press our button. Hey, Nicholas, thanks for the subscription. Transition Here you level. go, yellow, standard. So the altitude reading dropped by probably about 60 feet then, yeah. which equates to two notches on the hectopascals. Something like that. So, when the local QNH is below standard, the plane when flying at standard is actually lower than the MSL. Uh, Ken, sorry I didn't see what you were typing there. Please be careful with the full stops. This stupid AI bot thinks that, well, that when you use a full stop in your sentence, you're putting a URL into the chat. Um, let's see if I can quickly go read what you said. I do apologize, but this thing is not very clever. Uh, yeah, long time no see. First time in a while I can join in the live stream. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's nice to have you here, Kent. And now this bot gives you such a stupid welcome, but anyway, please forgive him, he's not that clever. Right, okay, so let's get rid of that one. We are now looking at the GLS chart. So that's where we I'm finals now. Okay. Right, so the only thing we need to do now, obviously, is to just keep our eye on the speed. I mean, that speed tape's ticking down, and we need to obviously do what we need to do, because this is not a train, we're not driving on rails. Right, we've got our ghost, what's his name's there already, so Last we're going to hit the set. approach button. We are now using the GLS approach function, and um, we are going to turn to the right to go down to the runway shortly. Oof, we've got another huge dip, look at that, look at that Thousand huge to dip. Level off. Thousand to go. One thousand. I'm a 1000 runway 14, Nico. Okay. Thanks, Kent. Yeah, um, are you talking about the GLS or about the QNH? Because we've been talking so much Q and mm -hmm. H now, we don't know. But GLS is nice. GLS really works well. Um, we've never finished that whole series of videos. You know, Last we still have to do that. Uh, but I mean, yeah, you guys can see how it works. As long as you've got the code in and so on, it, it works like an ILS, man. It's, it's obviously got a little bit of a different display there. You know, it's telling you GLS. But you've still got the normal rest so far. Thanks, Kent. Yeah, I just feel terrible, man. It's happened at least two more times with other people today as well. So it's kind of crazy. Right, so I'm pulling that speed brake back and I'm just arming it. We've got number one, 
there, there, okay, so speed brake, auto brake, everything is set. Linda's doing the rest for us and we've got 7.9 miles to go. There's the runway, got it in sight. This was an exciting stream, I really like this. Mm -hmm. to level off. Okay. Um after we land I'm gonna quickly just refresh your memory about this whole situation with um, the training we talked about this evening and then just show you guys where you can find it in my private hangar okay I'm gonna uh, show you guys that um, yeah we had a whole discussion about local Q&H and things um, I'm going to create a little document I'll make a little PDF as usual and I'll put it in the approach notes you know just as a little Bells tutorial when to press the Q and the, the, this on. standard button on the EFIS to go to local Q and H Kent. It was a whole story. Now Zebo has been absolutely fantastic in the background giving us tuition here. So um, he's just been Flaps marvelous man cents. this evening. He was great. Great for that. Approaching. One, four. See and now I'm not concentrating. <laughs> um, this DLA seems a little bit out by the way. I um, don't know why, but it, it is definitely not Flaps online, and we are now high. Hello, Annette. Approaching minimums. 200. Minimums. Paula, I see you texting. GLS, isn't it? So it's not lined up enough to be called an ILS. So the it's transmitter will be, be no, off no, the. No, um, no, no, it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be able to do that. Um, you'll to land with GLS. Eh? It's definitely there's something right. wrong here. So either it's the scenery or the nav data, but there's definitely something wrong yeah. here. Um, I've used this runway plenty of times. If you go back and look at my channel at my actual GLS tutorial I did last year, we used the same runway and it was spot on. I don't know why it's oh. completely out like this tonight. No idea. No idea. Ah, uh, Annette, don't blush. Um, we're happy to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> right, let me just quickly stop here. Just want to quickly have a look that it wasn't at the brain fault again. Uh, GLS can be my my mistake too. No, it's not. Mm -mm. No, I've I've. I was thinking maybe I had the wrong approach course. It was 135, and um, the code is 202. So that's all good. Um, I don't know. Look, I mean, whatever happened, it happened. We we fixed it, but I'll play with it a little bit again. Kent, yes, but there is a specific place that you need to press the button. Otherwise, the Zebo mod will not calculate 
certain things correctly and that was what the discussion was about um, I gave Zebo an example this morning and I actually complained to him that this version this is 16b that you guys don't have yet wasn't calculating the slowdown and the transition through 10,000 feet and then he came back and he gave me a whole story of why I was wrong and it's not the code's fault you understand and that started a whole discussion that took us down a rabbit hole that ended with us being completely overwhelmed with gratitude and made us very happy because now we understand things that you know we didn't before and um, it's amazing I mean do you think that he's making the mod so precise to copy the real thing I mean I've never had to think about when I press the button and all of a sudden now I need to think when I press the button because otherwise the rest of the system snowballs you know and it just doesn't work the way it should so yeah um, anyway right, let me go find the parking off the landing procedure after landing procedure After landing procedure completed. Thank you, Linda. I suppose you want me to start the APU now, right? Turning to the final. Safe landing. Enjoy. I'm just gonna box Flaps up and set. Gotcha, I understand. Okay. Shutdown procedure. Shutdown procedure. this flight for the VA and all. Um, I see my landing rate was minus 211. Thank you guys for everybody that uh, flew with. Sorry I didn't Shut stick around on the network, completed. but I think you understand why. So anyway, thank you. Yeah, we know all about that, Ken. Um, that's, that's basic aviation knowledge. What is not basic aviation knowledge is the rules of why what when where those kind of things and that is what Zebo basically explained to us so um, the mod obviously now complies with ah, you mustn't put a full stop Yoki um, <laughs> you you got to Tenor Duke know when to, to apply the Nico. rules you know and that's the whole trick um, Tenor Duke, thank you, my friend. Thanks for the tip. Um, Kent, yes or no, it's not. 
It's, it is, but it is not. Uh, it all depends on your Q&H. So what we've decided during this stream is to use a rule of thumb based upon the rules. And um, the, the, the thing can change by 1,000 to 1,500 feet depending on the Q&H. And, um, okay, Peter, thank you so much. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate that. Um, so the, the bottom line is that for us to do training in the Zebo is to use a rule of thumb. Then we don't have to go and teach people to do the calculations. And the rule of thumb is basically this. It's, it's very simple. It, it's, it's, it's neither here nor there about anything else. When you read on the chart that your transition altitude is 7,000, what we discussed coming from all the rules that Zebo gave us and the whole discussion we had together is that we are going to basically use a rule of thumb that says we're going to add 1,500 foot to the 7,000. The reason we want to do that is if your transition flight level is 1,000 or 1,500 above that, it's either going to be 8,000 or 8,500. But by applying the rule of thumb of saying we're going to add 1,500, it gives us a golden opportunity, a slot of 500 feet in which to press this, this button, that standard button to go from standard QNH to local Q and H, all right. So from one zero one three down to, in our case, yeah, it's one zero one one, right. So it gives us a five hundred foot gap. Now the the rules that needs to apply is then also related to the actual approach. You've got to take a few things into account. If if you look at the way this approach this actual star works. You cannot press standard QNH when you have a flight level restriction. So if you press the local QNH there, that's going to be wrong. Your aircraft will never be at the correct flight level. So you have to wait until you pass the last flight level restriction and you have to do it. You press the button. You can't, oh yes, you can't press it before you pass 10,000. You have to pass 10,000 feet um, on the the um, standard Q and H as well. Once you've passed the ten thousand, and from that point onwards, before a thousand foot above your transition level. Now this is just it's it's a it's a fluke that this one is also set to seven thousand. That can be any value. We know from the previous chart that the transition altitude is seven thousand. So we we know that. At the latest before 8,000 because you can't press it afterwards then the calculations will be wrong again uh, uh, which means now you've got flight level 1 to 0 you've got flight level 100 and then you've got that golden opportunity to press it before you hit um, the 7,000 transition altitude which means that if you set your approach page what is that page called again? I don't know if we're going to see it now. Um, index approach page. Uh, is that where we said it? No, no, no. It was in the VNAV descent page. Anyway, you know where you set your, your winds and your Q&H and everything? That Q&H is very important, like we said. But that value over there when we are on the appropriate page. Let's rather get off there. I don't want to confuse you. That value... Okay, we decided to, to put 1,500 on top because then we have a play of 500 foot in which to, to press it. Yeah, Zebo is trying to warn me not to, to say it incorrectly. Thank you, Zebo. Um, we, we understand transition altitude has got nothing to do with the descent. That, that's a given. But we have to use... A reference point to calculate where we want to press the button you understand so when we look at 7,000 foot as our transition altitude if we add 1,500 it's going to in this instance be 85 if it if you have a transition altitude of 5,000 or 6,000 obviously it's going to be a different thing so the limitations come in top-down 
we can't press it until we've passed the last flight level restriction and we can't press it before we uh, reach 10,000 because 10,000 slash 240 is also a, a, a limit it's a it's you know it's a, um, a restriction so we have to wait until we pass 10,000 and we need to press it before 1,000 foot above transition altitude which in this case is 85 and the moment that standard turns yellow you know You've got a small opportunity. Right now you can't see it. The moment that turns yellow, this STD changes yellow, it tells you it's time to press the button. And we've given ourselves through the rule of thumb a 500 foot gap in which to press that button. If we do it in that 500 foot, it doesn't matter what the actual value is because it will change from airport and runway and situation to situation but if we have that 500 foot and we press the button then we are complying with all the rules of aviation aviation law and whatever aerodynamics and any other law you want to call it you know atmospheric conditions whatever and and that's what we're aiming at so we we just use we literally use the transition altitude as our guide 7,000, it can be 5,000, it can be 3,000. If you add 1,500, you're still going to have a 500 foot gap in which to press the button. That's the simplest flight sim terms I can think of to teach flight simmers how to do it. Simplest way. And I hope that makes sense. Anybody else want to add something? No, I think that would work. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Without getting outrageously complicated. Yes, because, I mean, we can really get complicated now and we can then start, you know, dissecting the laws mm. of all kinds of science and <laughs> physics and stuff here and atmospheric pressures. and it's, it's irrelevant. For us as flight simmers, the simplest is... Take your point of reference, your transition altitude, add 1,500. The moment that thing goes yellow, you press the button. Easy as that. Then the Zebo code is happy. Zebo is happy. Lubos, thank you, my friend. <laughs> You'll be happy. We'll be happy. The ATC will be happy. And we'll comply with all the rules. Uh, I think it's as easy as that. Okay. Okay, so let me, let me show you guys this quickly. Um... Obviously, you're going to see it look a little bit different to what you see it. So maybe I must actually go do it and show you how you will see it. So let's let's look at something here quickly. Uh, let's go to my Zebo Drive. Uh, Peter, I can tell you one thing. Lubos is a genius. Don't blush, Lubos, you're a genius. I don't know. He's, he has the most impressive way of doing things and just knowing things. Anyway, it is amazing. It really is amazing. Look at this. Let me quickly show you guys. Okay, so this obviously is now my Google Drive. This is now what is called the private hangar. So if you go into the Zebo Drive, um, you'll see the approach config tips. That's a previous document that I created. So what I will do is I'm going to put this rule of thumb as an additional PDF under the approach config tips under the Zebo folder. So it's it's probably going to be up tomorrow sometime. I'm not going to kill myself tonight. If I can do it, I will. But otherwise, tomorrow sometime it will be in there. And then you guys can just read through it. Um, I'll put a little disclaimer in there just to make Zebo 100% happy that I'm not teaching you guys wrong. And um, obviously do, do not get a bunch of assholes killing me or trying to kill me for also simplifying it too much. You know, unfortunately there are those people as well that we have to take into consideration. So in the light of what we've discussed here, um, 
I will create that little just to do lift thumb just to, to have it available for you guys to remember and then obviously we're gonna continue testing and making the mod even better okay so that's it that's about what we're looking at any questions ladies and gents before we go any anything you want to add or mention no that's great Zippo, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here with us. Um, I wish you could fly with us. That would be an absolute, you know, wonderful thing one day when you fly with us. So until then, uh, gents, until tomorrow, we will probably speak to you guys tomorrow and do some flights again. And we'll take it from there. Have a good rest of your evening. Good night. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, Nico.